Ladies and gentlemen, I have the distinct honor of interviewing this man next to me, Richard Beam, which is the original singer of the song Suavecito. Richard, how are you, sir? I'm doing fine, thank you. What an honor, sir, to, to finally meet you and to get this interview. Well, it's been a long time coming, I'm sure. You know, I've seen you on Facebook many times and interviewing a lot of different artists, so I guess it's an honor for me, too. <laughs> you know, Rich, uh, about two years ago, I got to interview Little Richard, and I told my wife, I go, now all I need to interview is uh, Richard Bean, the original singer of Suavecito, and uh, I'm ready to pull the plug on this show, you know? <laughs> you don't want to do that. <laughs> Not yet, huh? <laughs> Not yet, no. <laughs> I'm sure there's many more interviews you can do. <laughs> Rich, let's go back and rewind now, okay? Let's go back, you know, many moons back and rewind, okay? Let's let's talk about Suavecito. How how was it produced? You wrote it. Uh, give us some 411 on it. Well, you know, I was, uh, first of all, you know, I was uh, one of the founding members of Malo uh, back in the days. And uh, uh, actually the song involved out of a love, uh, love poem that I wrote for a girl. Uh, and I wrote that in algebra class. I don't know if you ever heard the story, but um, no, no, share it with us. Then, what year was this? Um, uh, that was back in high school. So, mm -hmm. um, but I, I ended up uh, writing this um, love poem for this girl in algebra class, um, which I flunked algebra class. <laughs> so that's, um, but I ended up um, writing this love poem for her. But um, to this day, she doesn't know that I wrote this song for her. So really? because we ended up, she ended up breaking my heart. So oh my it's kind Lord. of one of those. Uh, Puppy so, love stories, you know. Uh -huh. yeah. So it was just one night, uh, what, two, three in the morning, you got on the piano or the guitar? No, no, it was just, uh, well, what I did, I used to write a lot, I used to write a lot of poems, and uh, that was one of the things I did when I was in school, when I had uh -huh. spare time, and I ended up taking this poem to um, the group that I was involved with at the time, which was the Malibus, which ended up being Malo, uh -huh. and they were jamming on this one, those riff and whatever, I just started singing this, this melody on top uh -huh. of it with these words, and... Um, which is? La 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 la, and then I never, I never met a girl, and then it just from there, wow. it just like just started, Look flowed like uh, just kind of all came together. Uh -huh. Yeah. Who who is gonna believe that a melody like that, like la 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 la, was gonna get so popular all over the world, my friend? Mm. You know, how, how do you feel about that, brother? Well, you know, I'm, I'm I'm pretty humble to that. You know, I don't I don't uh, re really you know think about that too much. You know, I just when I hear the song, I just think it how it feels to uh, to bring some kind of um, uh, memories to whoever's listening to it or what they were doing at the time or you know um, what enjoyment is bringing them or you know uh -huh. what it, that I, I hear so many stories behind that you know that song what people were doing you know they were either uh, at quinceañeras, or they were at a wedding, or they were their first love, or they were in the back seat of a car. You know, I don't there know. It's just like a, I wonder how many babies <laughs> were made to a suavecito. Huh? I heard it all, man. Really, be honest with you. Yeah. But when when you first uh, start writing it down, putting it to words, and all that, was there a, a difference? Uh, was there another version? And then did you cut here and there, or or was it the way we we heard it in the radio? It's pretty much the way you hear it on the radio. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The words and the melody. Uh, I did have um, a couple of um, help um, with some of the little bit of musical arrangement for the uh, Abel's Roddy and uh, Pablo Teas, who I was able to um, give them credit for you know their little contribution. Mm -hmm. But you know. Um, but uh, basically, the words, melody, and everything is pretty much fine. Wow. Yeah. How do you feel, Rich, when you travel and, you know, different people come up to you or they, they see you performing somewhere and they just tell you how much they, they adore this song, Suavecito? You know, how, how do they make you feel, brother? You change well, history in the well, century, I mean, <laughs> you know? I mean, you, uh, it's like a Chicano national anthem there. Well, you know? that's what I heard. <laughs> But no, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm pretty humble to it. You know, I, 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 I you know, thanked them, you know, immensely for it. You know, because I'm sure it meant a lot, something to them. You know, right. and um, so it must uh, be, bring some kind of memories to them that they would be honored to just come up to me and you know tell me these wonderful things about the song. Rich, I bet you've been all over the world, huh? Get, uh, share some places where you've been with well, performing been this all song. All over the world, but you know, I would love to continue, you know, uh -huh. touring and stuff, but. Uh, 
Um, that's one of the things I, I would love to do, uh, mainly because I, you know, back in the early days, I didn't get a chance to tour too much with the band at the mm -hmm. time, you know, uh, when the song was at its height. So I think now is a, is a good time for me to expose myself to whoever um, wants to really know who's behind the voice mm -hmm. and um, expose myself to that and just let them see who actually it is. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I, I am very happy that the city of Almani, to Ray Carrion for putting uh, uh, the Latin All-Stars uh, together today in the city of Almani. We just got back from there, and uh, people were just amazed. And, uh, and to, to see the, the, the OG, man, the, the OG of the song, um, it, it's just a different generations that have just come up to you, right? And, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, for some reason, it just uh, seems like it just... Um, happens to be that way I, there's always a new audience all the time you know when even with my band and the music that i've done you know back in the when uh i'm always getting people to come up and say wow you know the first time i ever heard that song and it's beautiful or you know or it's great or whatever so yeah there's always somebody there that always comes up and say that's the first time they ever heard it but they love it you know Right, and you know, and after how many years has it been, Rich? About with, with, is it is it forty years uh, with the uh, uh, Suavecito hit the charts? Uh? It's hard to believe, yeah, but it has been forty years, yeah, yeah. And you know, no kidding aside, today when we heard you in, in the city of Almani, it just sounded just like the original recording. My friend uh, that was with us, she goes, "My God, it sounds just like what I hear in the radio. The voice hasn't changed." Well, I hope not, you know. <laughs> you know, I hope I can continue, you know, singing, uh, and, you know, where I'm at uh, the, the song, you know, to whoever, you know, enjoys listening to it for as long as I can. So, you know, yes. I'm going to continue doing that. So. Rich, uh, I know there's a band called uh, Sugar Ray, and there's a, I forgot the name of the song that they did, but in the song they go, la, 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 la. Uh, 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 yeah, from, it's called Every Morning. Every Morning, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, what the story behind that is um, Mark McGrath, who uh, came up to me and I, when he came to San Francisco, we were talking about that. He said um, what happened is they, they, they used to go to these car shows down at, uh, um, from down, yeah, the Orange County or whatever, and they used to like always hear that song, and they said, man, Maybe we can do something with that song with some of you know, some of the music we could put together. So they ended up putting that little hook in there. But uh, I got uh, quite a bit of credit for that song. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it earned me quite a like a triple platinum. You know, for <laughs> yeah. That. yeah. Well, man, that, that is so awesome. That, let's uh, let's go a little forward now. So then, you put your band together now, okay? Yeah, I got uh, my band Sapo. Actually, I formed Sapo uh, uh, back after. Uh, Years back, when I formed after I left Malo, uh -huh. uh, I formed Sapa with my uh, with my brother Joe, mm -hmm. Joe Bean, and um, but you know through the times it's, it's, we've always gone through different musicians and um, just how that's how music is. Sometimes you get people that are dedicated, and some people that have to move on, and and you, that's understandable. But um, this band that I have now has been uh, probably the one of the best bands that I've had in a long time. So um, been together for you know. Some of us have been together since, you know, like maybe um, over 15 years now, you know. Really? Yeah. Now, with Sapo, you have a couple of uh, beautiful hits there, too, a couple of beautiful songs, right? Uh, what's the name of them? And uh, share with us what th those songs are. Well, uh, one of them is uh, another one that's pretty much uh, popular, I guess, with uh, a lot of Chicanos is uh, I Can't Make It. Right. And then um, the other one's a bit like Sapo's Montuno and then Ritmo de Corazon. Mm -hmm. So those are some good favorite songs that people like to get up and, and dance to or listen to, yeah. Again, now this is something you wrote. Yes. Uh, yeah. God, you're not only handsome, you're, 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 you're a genius, my friend. Well, <laughs> I don't know about genius, but I, <laughs> but I do like writing music and, uh, uh -huh. you know, well, singing. Beautiful so. songs. Thank beautiful, you. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. I mean, my wife goes crazy all the time. We, we have to uh, play it over and over on the, on the radio anywhere we're, or on our, our CD player anywhere well, we're traveling, you know. <laughs> Well, that that that's a, well, that's great. You know, I'm glad <laughs> she might get you moving. Too, there you yeah. go. Yeah, give me a little action. Uh, uh, website, email. How could people? Uh, I'm, I'm on Facebook. You know, okay. I'm working on my I'm working on my uh, website because it's been up and down. You know, uh, for a while. But uh, my Facebook page is always there. You know, Richard uh -huh. Bean Suavecito. You know, real simple. You Richard there. Bean yeah, that's Suavecito. There. 
Very but you good. remember the old American bandstand? Everything you guys were different shows like that, right? Oh yeah, that was you know, that was back then. You know when they had more more exposure. I think like especially for early bands that were you know trying to create something uh-huh. and had something to give you know to audiences. So yeah, you know Dick Clark was instrumental in, in doing a lot of that. You know bringing mm-hmm. good talent out in, in the beginning. So exactly, Rich. Uh, any inspiring musician out there, uh, young man, young lady, that's uh, striving the pavement out there? What, what kind of advice could you give them? Mm, I don't know. Today's I, well, to me, I think inspiration is, you know, it, it comes in different forms. I think a lot of it is inspired by what you feel within yourself, you know, uh-huh. what you inspire to be, what you inspire to uh, portray yourself as to be. I mean... Um, for myself, um, my inspiration, I guess, came from just just different moods that I had, you know, uh-huh. different uh, relationships that I had, um, and it's sometimes I, I put myself in somebody else's shoe and try to write like what they would feel like if I was singing this song, if they could relate to it. So it's either happy or it's sad, you know. So. Mm-hmm. So then uh, you would say, go ahead and, and write your lyrics, write your original music then, right? Well, I would say just don't give up on yourself, uh-huh. you know. If you have a dream, and to, uh, just go for it, you know. I, I mean, yeah, that. just uh, don't ever give up on yourself, you know. Wow, Rich. Wow, man. And coming from, from you, you know, we, we take that uh, to heart because this song has been heard by billions of people out there, and they love it. 40 years ago, today, and tomorrow. You know, it's part of history, my friend. Not every cultura, well, every, every culture out there. Well, I'm really honored. I actually, yeah. you know, people tell me, yeah, I play that song all the time. You know, we, we learn that song all the time. And it's on YouTube from everybody you can see, you know, has done that song. So it's, 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 a, great, uh, it's a great honor. Will you, do, to, yeah. will you do me the favor right now as we end the interview, lady, to give us a little acapella? No. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know, again, give it up for Richard Beam, please. Give him a big, big hand. We love you. You know, you're a hero. And take it away, Rich. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. I never, I never met a girl like you in my life. Oh, my Lord. I think I just had an accident. (laughs) (laughs) You're too much. (laughs) We love you, Rich. Yeah, I love you too, man. Mr. Duran, over and out.